We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. Being at the launch of Apollo 11 was something absolutely mind-blowing. T-minus 15 seconds. The launch experience is a, is a total body experience. It's vibration, it's sound. Ignition sequence start. Six. You first notice a light which is significantly brighter than the sun. And you then begin to feel a rumble approaching, transmitted through the ground. And then you get the blast wave, which pins your shirt against your chest. And then the full sound wave hits you. Lift off. Everybody's got this feeling of go, 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 and people are shouting, go, go, go. And nothing that you've ever experienced before, rockets or not, can really prepare you for that. Working on Apollo was part of a trajectory toward an uncertain future, but one we thought we were all building for all of humanity. I got employed on the Apollo program through an advert in the Daily Telegraph. Being a space knot, I saw this ad, would come and work on Apollo. I was recruited to work on launch operations for the Apollo experiments. I was recruited to go to Houston. We were asked to look at the data from the unmanned satellites and try to figure out how we could predict ahead where the satellite would be because they would have to tell the Apollo capsule where it would be two hours later so that it would be able to land at the right place. The Apollo program employed about 400,000 workers on it. And being a Brit, really didn't feel any different to anybody else. I didn't feel the historical significance so much. What struck me more was the fact they were paying me large sums of money by British or Irish standards, and it was a wonderful country to live in if you were young. We were all full of adrenaline, full of gung-ho. We obviously had egos because we wanted to be involved in as much as we could and thought we could change the world. And here we were being given blank checks to do it. This is a, a portion of the stabilization and control system that we needed to modify to accommodate the changes in the mass of the command module. I use this to argue with NASA that we should build the uh, stabilization control system completely differently. The work was fascinating. They had the biggest computers in the world, so if, as a computer person, that gave me access to machinery that I couldn't get anywhere else. There was a requirement raised by NASA to support a simulator for the uh, final 50 feet of a rendezvous and docking between the command module and the lunar module. We were able to modify the electronics a bit to simplify it using more up-to-date components and we were able to build it functioning the same as the flight hardware. Our role at Kennedy Space Center was to receive the uh, experiments. So we then got the crew in, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, and they went through the operations they were going to do on the moon with the actual hardware. And they would they actually asked us to do a few things like put a, a label on here to pull this one first. We got to the, the point where we were stowing everything back, folding the solar arrays, and there were two brackets that were thrown away on the moon. And our NASA principal engineer said, why don't we sign the back of one of these? I have to sign my name, put UK, because there were 27 British engineers recruited to work on it, and then drew a little Union flag. When it turned out what I was responsible for, it was radioactive materials, explosives, <laughs> and uh, I tended to get the more dangerous jobs, like being inside the top of a Saturn V at T-14 hours when we were putting the plutonium fuel caps onto the outside of the lunar module. 
So we had to install the experiment on the pad, which meant taking them to the launch umbilical tower, getting them up in the elevator, and then across the 280 foot swing arms. And it was a, a mesh platform, so when you walked across, you could see all the way down to the ground. So we had to carry the experiments up there. As we came up to the flight of Apollo 11, we all had our own views on the probabilities of whether it would actually be achieved on that first go. We'd had four preceding flights, which had tested the ability of all the hardware to get us to that point. But I think both Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin felt there was really only a 50-50 chance of being able to pull it off on that first attempt. The die was cast from my perspective. The software in Mission Control and in the lunar module was, was fixed. It was then up to the computers and the, the rockets and the astronauts to make it happen. We knew pretty much immediately that they appeared from behind the moon for the last time on their way down to the surface. We knew pretty much immediately that they weren't on course because some of the landmarks, some of the crater patterns that we were expecting to see were not evident. Armstrong could see that the computer was guiding him to the rim of a deep crater. Roger, 1201 alarm. So Armstrong took over of control and instead of descending further, he stops descending and he flies it horizontally for a quarter of a mile or so. People in Houston were getting very frustrated. They thought he was in danger of running out of fuel, but he knew what he was doing. 30 seconds, forward. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. The instant the Apollo 11 crew got down to the surface, there was a tremendous relief of tension, but we knew we had to keep a grip because we had to check that everything was okay for them to stay there. Personally, I felt physically sick and was convinced I was going to throw up. This is the document which I produced as I was working on the Apollo 11 mission, which is a compilation of all the events that were taking place as they were happening. Sleep status, commander, eight hours. Command module pilot, nine hours. Lunar module pilot, eight hours. That's one small step for man. I watched Armstrong take his first step onto the moon surface. Uh, and, of course, what struck me at that time was that how amazing is it that 600 million people are watching this live on their televisions as it happens from the surface of the moon. Nowadays people wonder how one could go to the moon on a computer that has an ad time of 11 microseconds when now it's probably done in a few nanoseconds. Computers were very primitive back then but for the job it had to do on Apollo um, they were adequate. When I look at the moon, I do think that my signature's up there, but also all the equipment that we worked on is all up there, and it worked well, and it did exactly what we wanted it to do. It was history. We were going to the moon, we were going to another heavenly body for the very first time. It just felt wonderful to be doing a small part to help that happen.